Hello, Michael here with ServiceNow, and I wanted to talk about a little known feature um, in ServiceNow called Service Creator. Now, Service Creator is one of the parts of ServiceNow that is really not shown or demonstrated that often anymore, but it's one of the most powerful parts of the plas platform um, that's really designed to be able to take uh, the idea of the request fulfillment um, with the with the fulfillers and the requesters and give that type of capability not just to the IT or even just to HR or some of the other products that we have but to really anybody within the enterprise business and so the idea of service creator is to be able to give the non-technical people the same type of cap capabilities that everyone in IT service management has uh, really grown up in the past several years to get used to so when we talk about service creator the first part about it is simply you know me as a business user non IT how do I go about and request some kind of way to take in other requests um, preferably in some kind of, some kind of uh, portal or some kind of catalog and so here I am logged in as as Joe employee um, I just have standard user access and service now so I don't have the ITIL role or anything like that and one of the things that I can go to is the ability to say you know I want to order something and in this case I want to be able to create a new departmental service and so you'll see here in the departmental service that there's the ability to say you know let's go ahead and have a new um, service category request so I want to create a new category in this catalog that's something I can manage I can control and I don't have to bother the service now admins to make any changes so in this case I'm going to say it's for a group um, in this case Actually, I'll, pardon me, I'll say it's an entire department. In this case, I'll go with uh, the sales department, of which I'm a, I'm a uh, part of. So my category is going to be sales requests. And the manager is going to be uh, good old Joe employee. So I'll go ahead and manage it. And then maybe I'll put in some comments. You know, I'd like to start offering um, sales requests through the portal. So of course I can go through and say, you know, let me submit this. Um, yes, I get a uh, request uh, record just like anything else in ServiceNow. I can actually see where the request is. I can also see how long it should take to get this fulfilled. But this is something that goes directly to the ServiceNow admin. So there's a little bit of, if you will, um, administrative overhead in the sense of you're just monitoring what's coming in so that way it doesn't get out of control. So if I switch to a different browser here and take a look and see what the admin will go ahead and view, I've got this part called the category requests. So I get the notification saying there's a new category request. I can see who it's from. Um, I can see the details in terms of what they want. So they want a, uh, a new catalog um, category for offering sales requests. Um, in this case, I can get fairly descriptive if I want to be able to say if I want to put it in a, a different service catalog. Um, so maybe sales has their own service catalog um, or maybe I want to have a, a different category so instead of it going under departmental services it goes under something else and then I can also change the name so maybe there's already a sales request category out there um, but either way the nice thing is I can see what's going on here and I can reject it um, or if I say hey you know this seems valid Joe's got the right authorization maybe I have workflows for, for approvals so on and so forth but once I'm ready to go I can say hey let's go ahead and create the category and table and so what we're going to see here now is ServiceNow is, is going to create a new table so you can see you underscore sales underscore task and it's really going to create an entire menu for this Joe employee to get into ServiceNow and manage their requests so in this case yep I want to go ahead and move forward with this and so ServiceNow is running all its scripts creating the table creating the permissions even changing some of the menus themselves so that way Joe can then log in and access the system um, so as it goes through and and configures all that the next part that I'll go ahead and move over to is you know back to that point of view of Joe the employee and so here as Joe the employee now um, I get the notification it came through and so the first thing I do have to do since there's a trade uh, change in permissions I will have to log out so make sure in communication you let them know, hey, if you're going to go ahead and manage your own category, log out of the system and log back in order to see the changes. But now, um, Joe's logging back in, and hopefully I'm preferably using some kind of single sign-on, but um, in this case I'm just using ServiceNow's uh, own author authentication. 
But as I log back in, I now start to see something where I have sales requests. So under my sales request category, I now have the ability to manage these services. And so I can say, okay, well, let me go ahead and first manage my service category. So I've got the ability to have multiple categories that are assigned to me. As you can see, there's some of this that's read only. So in this case, um, you know, the administrator, the ServiceNow administrator of my organization is going to set this information, but I can see who, um, who's in charge of this. In this case, it's me. And I also have the ability to say, okay, I need to add in some fulfillers into this. So um, these are going to be the people that are ultimately going to get access to the different tasks and to the menu in order to go through, see that there's things assigned to them, um, as well as being able to get a little bit more access into this category. Um, I can also edit, uh, add editors of this particular category. So if there's, if there are other people that want to give access to this particular category to create catalog items, I can do that as well. So I'm not limited in having to go to my ServiceNow administrator every single time I want to create a new category and have a way to manage this. I now have power to go ahead and configure this as I want. And more importantly, I am not an IT person. I don't have um, an ITIL license, the ITIL license being for the standard IT. Um, you know, this is something that's designed to be used for non-IT or non-technical groups and departments. So now that I have this out here, I can say, you know, let's go ahead and create a new service. So now it's going to take me over to my service designer. And the service designer um, is that graphical UI for me to be able to say, hey, I need to create a new service. And so this is essentially that form intake. So I can have a service name where um, maybe I have something like a quote request. So maybe it's out there for the salespeople and I'm part of the team that has to manage those quotes. And it's for requesting a unique quote. Um, I can go ahead and upload an image if I want. I can go ahead and put in um, multi-choice. So maybe I have something um, specifically saying, you know, what kind of sales is this? Is this a unique SKU or is it a standard SKU? Um, so I can drag that in there. I can go through and, and modify this fairly easily, you know, where I can say, okay, what's my question? Um, you know, what's the stage in the sales cycle? So maybe I'm getting some information here. Uh, and I'm saying, you know, you know, maybe, uh, you know, final quote. I'm not a salesperson, so I'm not going to say I know it all early final quote. Um, um, you know, last resort, whatever I'll call it. Um, but just some of those options in terms of, hey, here's some things I want, as well as being able to start to set the visibility. So I've got some control over how this particular question is going to show. So if it's always or if it's sometimes, if there's conditions, um, and then if there's going to be something man mandatory. So if they have to answer this always, for example, I've got that control over my particular question as I go through um, filling this out, I can go ahead and um, do, and I can go ahead and put my configuration options in here. Um, so there's the ability to put in just basic lab labels, checkbox, um, you know, maybe something like, is this a rush? Um, I can also go through and say, well, I want to select a particular item or maybe a particular person. Um, and so I get some flexibility in terms of what I'm going to be doing on this. So I'm filling out the initial view of this form. It's that intake form itself. It's got some of those general questions that I need in that sales department to have answered. Uh, and then I get into the configuration. So the requesters are going to go ahead and submit something to have this fulfilled. And so, you know, there's a question of um, there's going to be a message that they're going to receive. And, you know, maybe I have something to say, OK, we received your quote request. Um, of course, that notification will go to the requester itself, but maybe I have other people that I want to say, maybe the requester's manager. So I want them to fully understand that, um, I want them to fully understand that the manager itself is getting it, and then if there's any approvals. And the approvals are pretty straightforward, requester's manager, maybe a specific group, um, maybe that group is going to be sales. So, and then once we finish with that, then I say, okay, if the approved, if the if approved, who's going to do the work? So is it going to be a group, or is it going to be a specific person? In this case, I can say that sales group. 
and then of course the notifications that are complete. So it is the basic type of elements of workflow of who's requesting, what's the notification going to be when they get it requested, if there's approvals, who's going to be doing the work, and then what's that close, closed approval itself. Uh, and then we go to the availability, and so this is something when you think about what do you want to have your items on this category, not everybody in the entire organization may be able to, um, maybe may want to or even need to see this particular item. So in this case, I can break it down to my three different areas, location, department, or group. And so I've got the ability to say, hey, I want to add in a department. In this case, it's sales, so they're the people making these quotes. And I've got the ability to put in my little image and, and make it mobile and what else I'm going to do. So once I go through and finish this, I can go through and say, well, I want to same changes to this item. Um, I also have the ability to preview this item so I can see what it's going to generally look like um, before I really go through and publish it. Uh, and then I can just save it for going back to it at a net later point, so maybe it's not ready to be published yet, or maybe I'm set and ready to go for the publishing itself. Um, so I got a lot of options in terms of how I want to work with this. And so in this case, I can go ahead and say, let's publish this service, close the window. So now it's going to get saved. Uh, it'll automatically go into that category. And now when I go back to my catalog here, if you remember, I put it under Department of Services. So anybody in sales who's now going to this can say, well, I need to order something. Um, I've got my departmental services. You may notice that it now went to two categories. And I've got, uh, under my departmental services, I've got my quote request. And so now I'm gathering this information to say, OK, I, I should have saved some of this label. So I did that incorrectly. Um, is this rush? Yes. And then, you know, is there going to be a particular item that, uh, asset or item that's going to be used related to this? Um, but then I can go through and say, you know, I want to add this to a car. I have more things to do or I'm going to submit it. And the key part about this is the fact that this form with some basic flexibility in how it works of being able to show different pieces, of uh, being able to, you know, have conditional mandatory items is now a way for me to organize my work intake which is then going to have its own um, approvals with it. It's going to have um, its own tasks associated with it. And here we go from Joe employee that I submitted. Um, and it's a piece of service now that gives you a very quick and easy way to deploy services for non-technical um, members of the organization, um, but also giving them the power to go through and create their own and manage their own categories, which it is one of the things that as ServiceNow admins, you know, we don't want to get stuck into having to do um, all these, this management of all these little items themselves. We want to be able to say, hey, look, salesperson or marketing, you want your own little space where people can request services from you? Great. Here you go. Let me spend a little time just to show you how this works. Very simple and straightforward. And now we're able to take a lot of the power of ServiceNow and give it to um, those non-technical teams, that way they can take advantage of it as well. And then once again, all the data is going through ServiceNow. They've got access to that reporting capabilities if they want. Um, and so they really have a lot of power in terms of what they can do. The last part about this is if there is a need to take these services and really expand upon their use. So you're now talking about taking this from a basic ta task base um, to potentially to potentially a full-grown application with specific roles and and its own navigation system. So you found out that um, you know the the basic service the basic service workflow is just not enough. You now have the ability to say you know we have a service out there we're ready to go through and make it more powerful. I can now go to my ServiceNow Studio as an application developer and say you know I'm going to create a new application and I'm going to take it from my service. So I'm going to take it from my existing service now, and I, I can see some of my lists here. I'm going to give it a name. It's now going to get its own scope, and I've got the ability to say I'm, this is going to replace that existing service. So now I'm now I have that opportunity of service now to take something that I began with that really was pretty straightforward and simple to use, and now instead of losing all that work that that team had already put into it. We now are able to take it and put it to the next level as a custom application with its own scope, with its own security, and um, be able to really continue maturing this so that way the, that particular area of the business can benefit from it. Um, and that, to me, that just goes to show how ServiceNow can really mature and, and develop as different groups and different teams um, grow as well. So that's about it for the service creator. Um, 
If you have an account rep or a solution consultant, please ask them to go through it. It's very easy and straightforward. Um, if you have any questions, um, I'm, I'm on Twitter as at Slobodnik. It's a horrible last name in, in trying to remember, but um, feel free to reach out to me um, as well. Thank you very much.